Hello everyone, welcome to Acti Plus Academy for Civil Services. It's a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. So the most important news and editorial of the day that is relevant for the preparation of civil services examination will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 9th of December. The first important news that is a Rajya Sabha clear wildlife bill that promises for better protection. Second, what will India offer during its presidency of G20? This is from the text and context page of the Hindu. Third, provisions to become a national party in India. This is from the explain page. So recently, the AAP party has become the ninth national party of our country. Fourth, Sri Lanka to resume trade agreement with India. And the last is an editorial, a corrosive strike at the court. Right. So these are some of the important news and editorial for the day. Apart from the discussion, there will be MCQ based question. These questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. And before I begin this session, those of you who are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe APT Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video informative and helpful for your examination purposes, do press a like button. Starting the first news of the day, that is Rajya Sabha clear wildlife bill that promises for better protection. Something important for general studies paper three, that is under the subtopic, conservation, environmental protections, degradation and EIA. And this is also important for general studies paper two, where government policies and intervention are concerned. So Parliament has recently passed the wildlife protection amendment bill. So this bill seeks for the better management of the protected area and also provide certain permitted activities like grazing of movement of livestock and a bona fide use of drinking and household water by the local communities. So these were the important changes that were brought in by the Wildlife Protection Amendment Bill. The bill was passed by the Rajya Sabha, the voice vote recently and Lok Sabha has cleared this legislation in August itself during the monsoon season. Now talking about the details of Wildlife Protection Amendment Bill 2021, the Wildlife Protection Amendment Bill, which has undergone for the scrutiny by the parliamentary panel, seeks to conserve and protect wildlife through better management of the protected areas and rationalized schedule, which list out under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So the panel has given some recommendations and that recommendation has been incorporated by the government in the latest amendment. Now aim and objective of the bill, according to the statement of the objective and the reason of the bill, the Wildlife Protection Act, basically 1972 was enacted to provide for the protection of animal, birds and plant with a view to ensure ecological and environmental security of the country. Now, the bill seeks to include the aspects of conservation. Now, conservation B is particular bill may add ki gai hai. And even the management part has been included. The two important component that include first is the conservation, right? So first is the conservation and second being the management of the wildlife are covered under the act to make amendment more better for the protected areas. So this is precisely very important for your prelims examination and even if you're writing in mains paper, you need to highlight the point about the conservation and management. Now the Wildlife Protection Amendment Bill proposes to rationalize and amend the schedule, which is out of the wildlife species for purpose on the clarity to ensure the clear of the seized animal, basically for better care of them of the animal and disposable of the seized wildlife part and the products. The bill further seeks to enable the control of invasive alien species and allow further transport and transfer of a live elephant by person having ownership certificate in accordance with the conditions prescribed by the central government. So the norms to a larger extent has been strengthened. It has been rationalized in the context that this is pro-animal pro-environment. Now the new chapter has been added that is chapter 5b the wildlife protection amendment bill also proposed to insert a new chapter the principal act for the regulation of international trade of the endangered species 
of wildlife fauna and flora and allow the state board for the wildlife to constitute the standing committee now india is a party to the conservation on international trade and endangered species of wildlife flora and fauna which requires the appropriate measures are taken to enforce the provisions of the conventions now moving to the other news what will india offer during its presidency of g20 this is important for general studies paper 2 the relevant for sub topic that is bilateral regional grouping and agreement involving india in affecting india's interest recently india has assumed 18th presidency of the g20 forum this india overtook with indonesia on 1st of december 2022 and india will continue to be the president of g20 by november 2023 the prime minister of india called this opportunity a huge opportunity for india and g20 comprises of 20 members which include argentina australia brazil canada china france germany india indonesia italy japan republic of korea mexico russia saudi arabia south africa turkey united kingdom united states and european union हिस्ट्री ऑफ जी ट्वेंटी फोरम की अगर बात करें जी ट्वेंटी फोरम वॉज स्टैब्लिश वे बैक इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी नाइन बाय द फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर एंड द सेंट्रल बैंक गवर्नर ऑफ द सेवन कंट्रीज दैट इंक्लूड कैनेडा फ्रांस जर्मनी इटली जापान एंड यूनाइटेड किंगडम एंड यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स आफ्टर द मीटिंग इन द यू एस ए दैट इज इन द वॉशिंगटन डी सी डिस्ट्रिक ऑफ कोलम्बिया ना यूनाइटिंग फैक्टर वॉज फॉर नाइनटीन नाइनटी सेवन नाइनटीन नाइनटी एट फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस एंड इट्स आफ्टर मैथ that the financial crisis after this time was worse the global economic slowdown was even very much evident the first meeting of the g20 took place in 1999 and it was elevated to the level where head of the government of the state take part in 2008 meeting now premium forum for international economic cooperations in 2009 g20 was designated as a premier forum for international economic cooperations और ये फोरम इनिशियली डेल्थ करती थी मैटर्स से लाइक माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स की जो मैटर्स थी ओवर द इयर्स एजेंडा दैट हैज एक्सपेंडेड कवरिंग द इश्यूज रिलेटेड टू ट्रेड क्लाइमेट चेंज सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट हेल्थ एग्रीकल्चर एनर्जी एंड एनवायरमेंट तो ब्रॉडली जो ग्लोबल कंसर्न जैसे टॉपिक हैं जो फोकस एरिया थी उन पर खासा ध्यान दिया गया इस पर्टिकुलर मीटिंग में जिस फोरम ने नाम लिखी इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक कॉपरेशन Now, what does India's presidency mean for a global level? At the global level, and specifically in context of India, how this is going to precedent and set standard in the benchmark for a country like India? So, G20 is held annually under the rotational presidency, which rests with India till November 2023. Till November 2023, India will be overtaking and uh, continuing with the tenure of the presidency. The group does not have a permanent secretariat. A very important point for the prelims examination. and the presidency is supported by the previous current and future holders of the post together called trioka along with india g23 trioka include indonesia and brazil the president nation india will host 18th g20 head of the state and the government summit in december 2023 in new delhi now india's g20 roadmap india has planned to showcase its philosophies of vasudev kundakam that is one earth one family one future and a life initiative that was launched by the prime minister during the cop26 meeting in glasgow life stand for lifestyle for environment through the theme of logo of the event the g20 presidency of india is a striving for equitable and just for india in the world which negate the these turbulence agar baat kare jis tarah se sustainable holistic or responsible inclusive matters ki baat ki gayi hai overall development mein us context mein bahut sare challenges hai jo india ko overcome karni hai even uh, food insecurity energy transition the recent war in russia and ukraine the ongoing war these are some of the uh, basically point of priority the focus area for the government and also at the global level the presidency comes as many country witness the inflation recession trends compounded by the russia ukraine war and a standoff between the european union and russia now india's own problem with china is something that is also evidential of the fact that also the part of g20 group poses a potential issues for effective functioning of the forum 
However, the Prime Minister brief interaction with the Chinese President during the G20 summit in Indonesia in November 2022 has left expert feeling optimist about the situation. So the expert, the stakeholder are of the opinion that in the longer run, India will definitely call for the dialogue and diplomacy, whether it is China, whether it is any other country, India will be looking forward with an optimal solutions to the diplomacy. Now, working of G20 forum, ki agar baat kare, the process under the G20 are divided into two parallel tracks. Two important track hai is G20 forum. Ki. The pehli track hai, the first track is known as financial track, right? The first track is the financial track and the second track is known as SIRPA track. So what is financial track? Financial track, ki mein agar baat kare, this is led by the finance minister and central bank governors of the nation who meet throughout the year. So this is the financial track. Ki hoti hai. Sirpa track ki dar baat kare, they are the personal minutes of the leaders lead to take the Sirpa track. Uh, India mein Amitabh Kant, who is the CEO, who was the CEO of uh, Niti Ayo, has overtaken the Sirpa track. The overseas negotiation, although in the year, discussed agenda for the summit, coordinating the substantial work for G20. Now the G20 grouping it is designated around specific theme to operate within the both tracks and these Inclusive representations for the relevant ministries and the member nations include the guest countries too. Various international organizations such as United Nations, International Monetary Fund, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development are the participants of the working group. So this point, something relevant for prelims examination, there can be a direct question which can be framed by the UPSC. Now, the third important news that is provisions to become the national party in India, something important for gender studies paper too. That is the parliament and state legislature structure, function, conduct of businesses, power and privileges and issues are issues arising out of it. Recently, the Awadmi party has qualified to become the ninth national party of the country within the decade of its formation within the performance of the Gujarat election. So, this is a party. This is a very new party. It's only a decade or 10 year old party, which has a commendable performance considering the fact with the Indian political history. Jitni jaldi is party ne recognition hasil ki, itni jaldi kisi party ne hasil nahi ki. The Aam Aadmi party was leading in the five seat in the Gujarat within the vote share of 13%, a recent uh, elections result in the Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh, where uh, basically the, the party was actually defeated, but vote share mein inki contribution rahi hai, which went on the track to recognize as a national party by the Election Commission of India. So, the criteria of the national party banne ke liye, wo fulfill ki hai by the Aam Aadmi Party, and that has led this party to become the ninth national party of the country. The AAP is in power with the big majority as a very large vote share in Delhi and Punjab. Punjab may Aam Aadmi Party ki government hai and in Delhi they are also, but Delhi is not a full-fledged state, it's a UT. So uh, assembly, assembly ki agar baat kare, Goa assembly was also where it has took 6.77% of the margin or Gujarat may in only almost 13% ki ki hai. So it has uh, the recognition in four states. I'll just let you know what are the criteria just criteria ko fulfill karne ke baad hi national party ki recognition milti we'll see that on the later part of the video now about the national political party the name suggests the national party would be one that has a presence nationally and opposed to the regional party whose presence is restricted only to a particular state or region we'll see some of the example also the national party are usually bigger parties such as congress and bjp and as a smaller alliance like Communist Party and also recognized as a national party. The certain stature in something associated with being a national party and it does not necessarily translate into having a lot of national political club. Now, some parties despite have a dominance in their state, despite having the dominance, these parties continue to be a regional party. On kaun se example apply sakte hai? DMK in Tamil Nadu, BJD that is Biju Janta Del in Odisha, YSR CP in Andhra Pradesh, RJD in Bihar and TRS in Telangana having the major stay in the national affair but still remain a regional party. Now election commission ke definitions ke agar baat kare, who among the party can be defined as a national party kira, criteria hai or election commission kaise se define karti hai. The election commission has laid down technical 
criteria or for the political party recognition at the national level a party may gain or lose at national stature for becoming time to time depending upon the fulfillment of the criteria that is led by the election commission and as per the election commission political parties and election symbol 2019 handbook a political party may be considered as a national party if it is recognized in four state agar wo four states mein recognized hai then it is eligible to become a national party if its candidate poll at least 6% of the total valid vote in the four state and at least in the lok sabha assembly election at, uh, has at least four member in the lok sabha parliament to ye kuch criteria hai is criteria ko fulfill karke hi aam aadmi party ne basically national party ki declaration li and if a party won 2% of the total seat in the lok sabha and not less than the three states so these are the criteria if you have read lakshmi kant if you have read polity i think this thing must be very easy for you to understand now conditions for state party ki agar baat kare to be recognized as state party at least 6% of the vote share in the state assembly and at least have two mla 6% of the vote share in the lok sabha elections to have the state party and at least 3% of the total number for the vote in three state whichever more last for the elections and at least one mp for every 25 member or any fraction allocated to the states in the lok sabha and at least 8% of the total vote in the assemblies or the lok sabha from the state so you can pause this video you can either take screenshot you can refer to the reference book as well to get the necessary conditions required for the national party as well as for the state party this can be relevant for the prelims examination now looking into the national parties in india at present there are eight parties before the aam aadmi party was actually announced as a national party isse pehle basically eight party thi jo ki national party thi after the inclusion of aam aadmi party the total party national party in india became nine so these party include bjp congress trinamool congress cpi m cpi nationalist congress party bahujan samaj party and conrad Sang- sangma national party npp which was recognized in 2019 One of the official result of the Gujarat election, as announced, Aam Aadmi Party has become the ninth national party of our country. Now, moving to the other news, Sri Lanka to resume trade agreement with India. Something important for Jana Studies paper two, that is India and its neighborhood relations. This particular news is important for Jana Studies paper two under the subtopic. Recently, the authorities of Sri Lanka has said that it will soon resume the talks with India on the stalled economic and technological technological cooperation agreement. This is known as ETCA. Sri Lanka took to trade pact of the foreign direct investment to rebuild its crisis hit economy, and Sri Lanka has finished eleventh round of bilateral talk last time between two thousand sixteen to nineteen with the aims to broaden the deepening ISFTA. as is enforced in sri lanka since india sri lanka free trade agreement was actually signed so progress was stagnant and now sri lanka has recognized the fact that this is the economic progress is only possible once they have the trade and negotiation because we have seen that sri lanka has seen the worst economic crisis since its independence इस तरह की वेस्ट इकोनॉमिक क्राइसिस पहले कभी भी नहीं देखी गई और रिसेंट में श्रीलंका ने मिल्क प्रोडक्शंस को लेकर के इंडिया के साथ एग्रीमेंट की भी बात की है ताकि वहां इंडिजिनस मिल्क प्रोडक्शंस को बढ़ावा दिया जा सके नाउ द चैलेंजेस टू इकोनॉमिक एंड टेक्नोलॉजिकल कोऑपरेशन एग्रीमेंट द ईटीसीए हैज फेस्ड कंसीडरेबल रेजिस्टेंस फ्रॉम द सेक्शंस विद इन श्रीलंका मेनी ऑफ देम फ्रॉम द नेशनलिस्ट ग्रुप एंड द ट्रेड यूनियन हु शोस the pact as giving india an unfair advantage to wahan pe domestically logon ne protest ki hai india ke sath is agreement ko lekar ke and etca itself followed a decade long but futile negotiation on another pact the comprehensive economic partnership agreement sri lanka recent emphasizes on the free trade agreement and the fti that is foreign direct investment is a part of president strategy sri lanka's president strategy for economic recovery of the island nations reeling under the impact of worst economic crash since its independence now the economic conditions of sri lanka ki agar baat kare according to the world bank sri lanka economic has contracted by an estimated 9.2% of this year and it is estimated that it will further contract by 4.2% in 2023 meanwhile the government is talking to the creditors 
to restructure its foreign debt and qualify for the IMF support for the next year. IMF ne reject kiya tha bailout package ke liye. The bailout package which is supposed to be there from the IMF was actually being rejected considering the conditions, economic conditions of Sri Lanka. Now, moving to the editorial of the day, a corrosive strike at the court, something important for general studies paper too, that is structure, organization and function of executive and judiciary. So what we are going to discuss under this editorial, first precisely talking about the theme, that is the collegium system versus the national judiciary appointment commissions. There's some important issues that I'll be discussing with you. The first is shortcomings in the national judicial appointment committee, or you can say commissions, concern over the judicial appointment provisions of the NJ Act 2018 and the way forward. So starting with the background, so the recent attack on the collegium system by the Supreme Court are disconcerting at the fact that the law minister and the vice president have tune their voice in the same tune and they have categorically you know basically highlighted the issues with regards to the appointment of the judges via the collegium system. The collegium system has been criticized in the past and so had the Supreme Court for having struck down the 99th Constitutional Amendment Act which called for the creations of national judicial appointment commissions which was voted unanimously both by the houses of the parliament. So either it is Lok Sabha or the Rajya Sabha, dono houses in the unanimously se pass kiya, but iske jo experts opinion hai, wo kafi zada different hai from what the government stand is. I'll tell you what are the expert opinion in the later part of the video. Now, shortcomings of the National Judicial Appointment Commissions ke agar baat kare, to jo expert ki opinion hai with regards to the Constitutional Amendment and the National Judicial Appointment Commission, they have said that it's a poorly drafted act which has uh, something which will be definitely collapsed. Iski jo collapse se wo inevitable hai considering its contradictions in the bill itself. All the topmost and the veteran councils of the Supreme Court of the India has argued that the amendment has reportedly informed the Supreme Court that they have no objections to NJSE and replacing the collegium system provide the judges sitting as a retired were having the clear majority in the commission. So, it is a system banani ki baat ki gai hai jaha pe judiciary ki dominance ho na ki executive ki. But the Union of India has refused to relent the 99 amendment act which was efficiently struck down by the Supreme Court stating that this is a violation of the basic structure of the constitution. Under Article 124 of the National Judicial Appointment Commissions, have eventually they have come up with six members, but the chairperson and the Chief Justice of India has no say in the voting. So, if the six members have no say in voting, then how can the body powerful? Kaise ho sakti hai? This is something the expert have taken a note of. Now, this would happen if there is a tie. Now, what would happen in deadlock? Agar tie hoti hai, kisi voting ke beech mein char members agar karte hai, voting ke beech mein members ko agar voting right nahi hai, us conditions mein kaise puri jo appointment process wo complete ho paayi. Now, concern over the judges appointment to select the judges of the High Court and the Supreme Court, two eminent person needed no connection within the law. In fact, ye baat ki gai hai ki jo eminent person uski koi criteria nahi hai, he should be having a sound knowledge and he should be expert of his field. Example ke taur pe MS Swaminathan jo ek renowned agriculturist hai unhe bhi member banai ja sakti but the fact is that he might not be having any judicial knowledge with regards to the functioning of judiciary. Now one third of the national judicial appointment commission should be constitutionally be blissful and aware of the functioning of the supreme court or the high court has yet to decide on the destiny of our Indian judiciary or the higher judiciary. Now provisions of the National Judicial Appointment Act 2014 highlight which prescribe the procedures for the appointment of the judges, the transfer of the judges that was riddle and contradictions with the absurdities. Section 51 that require the National Judicial Appointment Commissions to recommend two senior most judges to the Supreme Court as a Chief Justice of India if he is considered fit to hold the office. Now, neither the 99 Constitutional Amendment Act or the NJ Act was prescribed for the criteria of what constitution fits to hold the office. A shocking provisions of the veto power with no recommendations could be made by the NJSA if 
द टू और सिक्स मेंबर डिसएग्री तो कुछ ऐसी कॉन्ट्राडिक्शन है फैक्चुअली इसके ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल सेटअप पे ही फॉल्टनेस बताई गई है दे कुड बी मोर ब्लेंटेड मेथड फॉर फ्रस्टेटिंग द अपॉइंटमेंट प्रोसेस विच वुड इनेबल द एग्जीक्यूटिव टू कम्प्लीटली डोमिनेट द जुडिशरी तो एक्सपर्ट क्या कहना है कि ये प्रोविजन के थ्रू एक एग्जीक्यूटिव की अननेसेसरीली डोमिनेंस हो सकती है जुडिशरी एंड जुडिशरी इन इंडिया शुड ऑलवेज फंक्शन इम पार्शल एंड इट शुड नॉट बी समथिंग विच विल बी फेवरिंग इट शुड बी ट्रांसपेरेंट इट शुड बी वर्किंग फॉर द बेटरमेंट फॉर द सिटीजन ऑफ दिस कंट्री Now the selection process of the High Court was even more bizarre. The Chief Justice and the two senior most judges of every High Court has to be nominated by the person to the NAJ who is appointed as a High Court judge. So, I am telling you the old provisions. I am telling you about it. Simultaneously, NAJ could include nominated person from the appointment as a High Court judges. What would happen if the two seats of the nominations were different and no answer can be made in this regard? further the national judicial appointment commissions has to have illicit in writing and views the governor views as and the chief minister views about their opinion so there is a lot of hierarchy and a lot of contradictions that is evident with the uh, with the appointment which is made through the njac and these are the shortcomings the reason being the supreme court has categorically noted that this njac act is again the violation of the basic structure of indian constitution Now, if you look into the comparison part of the NJAC and the collegium system, in the collegium, collegium system is based on the three cases judges, and under the appointment, the judges are paid by the Chief Justice of India and four most senior judges of the Supreme Court. It has no constitutional backing. So, Article one twenty four में provisions दी गई है that one judges की जो appointment है वो president करेंगे with their the discretions. Actually, not from the discretion, by definitely president is something which is consulted by the judges and president. criticism says that it's a closed door policy that lacks transparency but again what does ngc has to say it's a body that was created to have a two decades old collegium system to replace it it was passed by the lok sabha in 1340 august 13 in 2014 then passed by last sabha in late day will consist six people cgi two senior most judges law minister and two eminent person the contradiction is with again regard to the eminent person he cannot have any uh, like he must he might not have any background on judiciary then then also he can be the member of that criticism says that the judges in the ngs will need to support the other two push and their fear of the judicial independence being compromised now the way forward the president collegium system despite its drawback is far better methods to select the supreme court judges and the high court judges if you are writing in mains paper you definitely need to have a balanced approach with regards to the appointment of the judges and the expert opinion is that mostly political which is in par are allergic and ill tolerance to independent judicial but for india for a democratic country like india where fundamental right is pivotal for the citizen of this country an independent judiciary is very much needed and it requires the politicians to raise to the level of statement and even the visionary to withstand on how vital an independent judiciary is to function for the constitutional democracy now moving to the mcq questions of the day before i proceed just to tell you the answers of yesterday questions for first question the correct option is c for second question the correct option is b today's mcq for practice recently the earliest known animal known as dickesonia was found in which of the following location bimbetka rock shelter elora cave ajanta cave or elephanta cave so do check it out for the correct options second question of the day that is mk1 arjuna tank it has been indigenously designed and developed and manufactured by cvrd and drdo the project arjuna main bank title was started by drdo in 1972 so do check out for the correct option this type of question Will definitely give you an edge for the upcoming prelims examination. Practicing a lot of question will give you an practicing edge and even provide you the clarity about the particular topic. So this was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the MCQ questions. If you have any other concern, you can let me know. I'll be more than happy to assist you. For time being, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching this video.